Okay, in this tutorial I'm going to give a little bit of a preview to the Inventor interface and then cover how to put together a simple VEX assembly with the Supersonic Sparks CAD library in Autodesk Inventor Professional. So, first we come over to New and we're going to create a um, assembly. And Basically, for Autodesk Inventor, there are, in general, two types of parts, or two types of files. A part file, which is an IPT file, and an assembly file. You make assemblies out of multiple parts. A part would be something very simple to construct, and assembly would be you know, more of a complex shape. So whenever you're going to be constructing a robot, you'll typically be using an assembly. So, hit OK and Autodesk will load up the new file. Okay, so you can see that now this is the assembly view. We have over here um, a view cube, is what they call it, and this is basically how you can orient yourself about the pivot point, and nothing right now is being able to be shown because you have no parts there. Um, so let's say we wanted to add a part. We click place. And then we can navigate our CAD library. I have installed the Supersonic Sparks CAD library because it is very extensive and uh, has all the parts that you'll really need in it. So let's say we just wanted to add a standard C channel. So we go to Metal C channels. And we'll do this. Um, 5 by 25 and that was a dialog box saying that this is an educational product so right now over here there should be a um, components interface but I have hidden that so show the browser this will show you what parts you have in your assembly so this shows that I have a C channel right now. This little thumbtack means grounded. I can't rotate it around or move it. But you can now see what the view cube does. This returns to the home position. So I can spin this around and home goes back. Then I have the pan tool, which is a little hand, zoom, magnifying glass, and orbit. Orbit allows you to orbit around the interface when you click inside the circle there, or rotate the interface when you're on the outside, like that. Press home to get back to the original configuration. Okay, so now what I'm going to show you is a little bit more about uh, what is on this part right here. So, go back to the Assemble tab. You'll notice that if I select this part, I'm going to zoom in, and you'll see there's these little green circles in the holes. Those are sketches. So I can come over here to the model, and you'll see it has three sketches. There's this one. on the Sketch 2 is for the face, the main face. And sketch 1 is for this side. Sketch 3 is on the other side. These circles will help when you're constraining uh, screws or other types of uh, cylindrical parts to the square holes in the VEX metal. So now what I'm going to show is a you know just how to constrain a couple pieces and I'm going to put in a standoff and put together a little bit of a chassis. So, I come over to standoffs and couplers, and I'm going to use a two and a half inch standoff. And this message is again the educational warning, so just I'm going to ignore that message because it doesn't really pertain to much. Okay, so I've just placed two standoffs into this model. Now what I've got to do is, you can see right now, press V, and that allows you to select and move pieces around. You'll notice I can move this around. 
okay? I want it to stick on this hole. So the way you do that is with the Constrain tool. It's found right here in the Symbol tab, Position, Constrain. And first what you do is a face constraint. And that is, you zoom in really close until you can see where you're working in. And this is a face. You can see the arrow that's pointing straight up. That's a face. Now we can zoom out. Select the second half of the constraint, where we're constraining this to. Now you can hover over one side of the metal in Autodesk, and it should allow you to select the other side. But sometimes, depending on your computer, it won't. So, I'm just going to orbit around. Well, I'm going to rotate up and pan over so I can see the bottom of this C channel. And this is the hole that I want. So, face constraint, like so. And now, you'll notice when I click on this, just hit escape don't press V to move, press escape. You'll notice that it sticks to the surface of the C channel, but it can still move side to side. So now what we do is an axis constraint. And that's done by going to the constraint tool. The shortcut for constraint is C. So this is when you've selected the axis, okay? You see the dashed line. So you click when you have the dashed line like that, and then you mouse over the circle until you also get a dashed line. And you mate the two axes together, so that makes the two axes um, concentric, the two circles concentric. Press apply, and now you'll notice, if you press escape, this will only rotate. And it doesn't really matter if it rotates. If it really bugs you, you can, you know, right click on it and say grounded. And that just means that it's frozen and you can't move it whatsoever. But for the most part, that's. Uh, I don't know what I just did there. Okay, for the most part, though grounding it isn't necessary. So I think what I'm doing is opening it. They've changed the interface since I've been used to it. So you can right click over here on the component in the model pane and uncheck grounded. Now I'm going to do the same thing for this um, standoff. 